Chapter 3 Flora One year later, it was the same story. Armin, the hope runner, had not returned. The city, usually filled with hope, would slowly let it fade, their eyes turning back inwards to where life still existed. It would be like switching off the headlights after a long drive through the night, dreams and nightmares retreating to the rise of the overwhelming bare dawn of the present. Flora was where she had been for the past few months, in the same call center, fielding support for the city's most popular public car market's application. She did not enjoy the job, but it was a way for her to snoop and confirm one of her suspicions. Someone must be manipulating the car markets. It couldn't possibly be this clean for decades. With all the data the company had on its customers, they could be using it for their own illegal benefit. Before she dove deeper, she had to first fill her quota. Despite the gridlock and its associated market existing in its current form for decades, it still confused many citizens. Through the endless halls of the call center, you could hear the same phrases echo. Yes, when you buy, the car will also be always on sale. Yes, they base your taxes on your always on sale price that you choose. Yes, anyone can buy it from you at any time. That's what it means. Always on sale. It's not that difficult. The latter commentary came from Flora, who often got impatient. However, she knew how it worked, from the app to the cryptographic innards of the public car markets. She unfortunately couldn't forget it. Her thirst for knowledge often got the better of her, and the result was that her mother was now living in a bus, quite a downgrade from the apartment they used to have. During her teenage years, she convinced her mother to leverage for profit the money they received as reward for River being crowned as a hope runner. A sudden, volatile market movement driven by the election of a new mayor caused it all to unravel, losing almost all of their money. Despite this, Flora couldn't help herself. Her quota was done. It was time. She stood surveying the gray cubicle honeycomb around her. It was safe. She contemplated it again, but her desire for answers trumped the warnings she had already received. She opened the console and started poking around. When she hunched over her screen, the first siren sounded. Flora frowned and looked around her. Her neighbors rose like submarine periscopes, or you could say meerkats. None existed anymore, but that's what Flora imagined it looked like. Some workers continued talking to their clients with nervous eyes darting around. Another siren went off. Flora immediately put down her headphones and curiously walked to the windows of the call center. Through it, she saw some of the gridlock below, bordered by a growing portion of concrete, the mid-levels. Much of the expansion came from citizens moving away from the anomaly and the suburbs and into the city under the internal dome. Some of her workers joined her as a loudspeaker boomed through the city. It was the mayor. Citizens of gridlock, please stand by. A hum of noise grew louder as the city rattled off its dust from its memories. People in the streets below glanced up, wondering. Flora reached into her jacket pocket. A feeling rose within her that she never thought would come. She felt her father's bracelet. Could it be? The mayor's voice came on again. Citizens of gridlock, please stand by. The white noise fizzed to silence as the mayor appeared on the screens of the dome. Citizens of gridlock, she started. Please listen. An emergency broadcast will resume in a minute. No one is in danger. The dome fizzed to the city's logo, its gridlock crowned with a sun. Suddenly, in those few moments, anything felt possible. Multiple generations living in a city that the world had forgotten. The planes didn't fly anymore, and the rest of the world was silent. Any promise was a beacon, an answer to the anomaly. Citizens of Gridlock, please stay calm. We would like to inform you that Armin, the Hope Runner, has returned from beyond the anomaly and is at the dome gate. Flora's heart swelled. We've established, however, that his long-distance mech is not moving. We repeat, Armin, the Hope Runner, has returned, but we are not sure in what state or capacity he is. Please stay calm as we evaluate. And so, with that same rise, her heart fell back to earth like a roller coaster. Noise rose through the city and the call center halls. 
She was breathing erratically and leaning against the windows. When she snapped out of it, she realized all the workers were rushing to their desks. A cacophony of phones started ringing. The floor manager's voice came over the intercom. Everyone return to their desks immediately. All hands on deck. Code orange. The public car markets were going wild, trades firing off. The calls came in like a deluge of water. Every citizen suddenly wanting to buy a piece of their future. The gridlock formed when the city had to evacuate, and despite decades of not moving, it still held that promise. If the anomaly were to collapse, then they might have to leave. Flora rushed back to her desk, struggling to cancel out of her snooping and back into the support calls. As she put on her headphones, another siren went off. She received an answer she didn't want to hear. Citizens of Gridlock, we can report that Armin, the Hope Runner, has returned. However, with a heavy heart, Armin is dead. I repeat, Armin has returned, but he is dead. Please stay calm. We will report back with more information as soon as we can. She bowed her head and reached into her jacket pocket, holding her father's bracelet. She feared the worst. When she looked up, her manager was hovering over her. Get out. You're fired. No more warnings. Startled, she looked back at her monitor open files and programs she should not have been looking at. Now in Code Orange? Really? The world is basically doesn't matter. Flora looked away from her manager, pursed her lips, and tapped on the desk as she thought through her options. She stood and looked her manager in the eyes. There's a lot that she wanted to say, but like the gridlock, it didn't move from her thoughts to her voice. She rolled her eyes in disgust and turned around flinging the small amount of belongings she had into her backpack. She hurried towards the exit and into the noise of the city outside. There were people running around, racing to cars in the gridlock, absorbed in their phones. They all seemed to be trading the sudden volatility. In front of her, a man was packing up his belongings from his car while he was swearing. Flora could only deduce that someone else bought the car away from him before he responded in time to raise his always-on-sale price. That realization sent a jolt through her body. Her mother. Their home. She pulled out her phone to call her mother, but the networks were clogged. This city, with its gridlock funding the Hope Runners, suddenly had many people running around in it. So, she joined them. Through the streets, through the gridlocks, through the trunks, she raced to her mother, hoping that she was okay. Hoping that they weren't caught unawares. Hoping that they still had a home. Flora knew that their area wasn't exactly prime property for a hopeful exodus, but she still worried. As she drew closer, the buildings started throwing more shade, hiding the harsh sun. It got quieter as she turned the final bend to her mother's home. She took a breath, expecting the worst, but it was quiet. Her pounding heart slowed as she approached their home. Mom? Flora asked as she opened the bus door. Flora! Her mother replied, I'm okay, Flora, I'm okay, we're okay. The home is still ours. A wave of relief washed over her as she came in for a hug. As her mother pulled away afterwards, Flora spotted the frown on her face. Wait, why aren't you at work? Madeira asked. Flora's relief turned into shame. It had happened so many times before. Mom, Flora said as her shoulders dropped. Hey, it's okay. We'll be okay. Maybe it's better. Who knows what will happen now? I'm sorry. I'm so sorry, Flora replied, pulling her face into her mother's shoulders. Tears welled up in her. She thought it was because she had been fired again, but another emotion overwhelmed her. It was shock. Tears started streaming down her face without her control. It's okay. I felt it too, Madeira said. Flora unwrapped her arms from her side and embraced her mother. Madeira continued, It doesn't mean he is dead, okay? River is still out there. We'll find the answers one day, sooner than we might think. That's exactly what Flora hoped for. Despite the chaos, suddenly, anything felt possible. She did not, however, expect that a new Hope Runner championship would immediately be called to follow in Armin's footsteps.